welcome everyone to another stream here on Nerd of the Rings. We've got a wonderful roundtable tonight filled with your favorite orcs. And we've got the all-star lineup of Mr. Jed Brophy, Mr. Phil Grieve, Mr. Luke Hawker, and Mr. Robert Strange. And you guys yeah. might... <laughs> <laughs> got all kinds of pointing going on here um so these gentlemen um some of them you will recognize from uh previous middle earth films um but today we're primarily talking about their appearances in the new show the rings of power as uh some of the most fearsome orcs ever captured um gentlemen thanks so much for joining me today you're welcome Thank you. thanks for having <laughs> nice us to be here so so I wanted to to first go through so we could we could have people kind of connect the faces with the orc faces, I guess we'll say. Um, and so we could we could uh, attach you guys to who you're playing. So this is Phil, correct? And it is Bazur. So you'll recognize him from this is a still from, I believe episode. Four or five, maybe. This is right, right before Adar comes in, and we we get the reveal of Adar. Four, okay. Um, and then we have Lurka, Mr. <laughs> Robert Strange, <laughs> and Magrat, which is Luke. Um, he had that memorable moment with the water mm. ration. Yes, mm. killer. And then, of course, uh, we saw Jed. He he had the bragging rights of being the uh, thumbnail image for the Comic Con trailer, I believe it was. Okay. Showing that off, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. <right>, Brock. So, <laughs> so, so I I wanted to dive right in. Um, you know, for for you guys uh, who were involved in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and everything. Um, what what uh differences were there in terms of the prosthetics like i i i saw there's a, there's a couple moments where watching the show i thought the orc seemed more expressive to me and i i was wondering if that was you know m just me reading into it or if it if it felt like that to you guys as well um I th yeah i think back in the day we were using foam latex which it's a bit more porous. It takes a lot more um, upkeep on the day. It dries out, and especially the blends, you have to constantly be touching it up all day with the makeup. Mm. Silicon is very, if I'm correct, Luke, is a lot more translucent and takes color better. Um, but, yeah, that, um, silicon's also a lot lighter kind of feeling on the skin. And, but it may just be that we've got older and our skin is more flexible. <laughs> <laughs> And um, there's a lot more control with silicon uh, to do with the density. You can actually make it really, really soft and kind of very supple. Uh, the other thing it does is it warms up on your face, uh, whereas foam latex is much more like a blanket that kind of, you know, it can kind of restrict you. And, and it, 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 as, as, you know, Jed says, it can start to, when it falls off and cracks and breaks, it can get um, pretty ugly around the mouth. Um, but yeah, it more becomes part of your skin, whereas foam kind of, you kind of, your muscles move and then foam kind of follows behind. So it's a bit of a dampener. Ah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. There was a, 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 one moment in particular that came to mind was when, uh, I think Jed, you react to, uh, when the elf gets his throat slit and there's that shot of you like looking really surprised and, uh, it's really, really quick, but it's that moment where, uh, you know, it takes the orc even by surprise, and he's like, "Oh, oh crap, that just happened." <laughs> <laughs> Meg Rod or Meg, he was it. We were surprised. It's like, wow, he's, <laughs> he's changed. Wasn't he? You never know what you're I gonna just, get, Meg I didn't really like Orgy. You know the way he was looking at me. It's yeah. like, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> gotta put him. You gotta put those elves in their place. You know, some, That's right. time to time. Yeah, show him who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I did. I uh got some questions i asked uh some of my followers for questions uh leading in so i'm going to try to mix in some follower questions uh one of them that i got was um how has portraying orcs in a period of time where orcs are closer to their creation and um 
you know, uh, further removed from dominating Mordor as we've as we've seen in the show so far. How has that affected your performance um, and the the story surrounding the orcs? We did quite a bit of work on this when we first got to set. Uh, we had a few classes with uh, Joseph, who plays Adar, and uh, he was very keen that we take a very different uh, approach in terms of uh, seeing ourselves perhaps as refugees mm. and looking yeah. for our own homeland. So culturally, it's quite different, I think. Yeah, we've, we've definitely seen, uh, you know, the, the dialogue between Adar and Galadriel uh definitely put a new uh perspective i guess you could say on on orcs and um you know the the idea that they are creatures who are you know uh, beings who are equally uh um have a right to living <laughs> i guess you could say um and it's it's interesting because that's something that tolkien himself struggled with in his later in his life was the idea you know he given his faith especially the idea that there's an entire race of people that are irredeemable didn't sit well with him so it's interesting to see the show exploring that yeah, we talked physically too um a lot with the movement coaches about wanting to make them more upright because they were trying to emulate their elven father yeah. Um, given that we're probably the first generation of orcs bred rather than ones that were taken and tortured from their elfdom. If you, you know, if, if you give credence to what uh, Tolkien was sort of talking about, we talked about physically them being not as broken as the orcs that we see in the third age is one thing we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was another question that was actually submitted as well was uh, about, they they specifically were wondering if you did any warm ups to get into character, like as far as the body movements and stuff. But I know Jed, when when uh, we've talked before about you portraying an orc, the the physicality part of it is definitely, um, you know, just as much of the performance as delivery of any lines or anything else. Yeah, I mean, I'm I don't want to talk about these guys' performances, but we all kind of came up with. A couple of because we all play at least two characters we all came up with a couple of different ways of portraying these characters in terms of what their jobs were you know are they digger orcs are they fighting orcs but it kind of came from a basis of them trying to be more upright not quite as crouchy as the as the orcs that we played in the you know those that played them in the third age we were lucky that we had a very tall orc and roberts mm. they were a whole new thing. <laughs> You should talk about that, guys. By being tall. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk for the whole hour about that. Um, I tried I tried a little to, for, for Lurker, the one we saw the picture of, to mm -hmm. let the sculpt influence the physicality a little bit to help, which, which is quite a funny thing uh, when you perform in prosthetics because it means you don't, you tend to do your only makeup test just a little bit before you shoot. So it's the first time you get to see the full thing. Maybe you've seen some concept art, but um, yeah, here he is. He's got. If you zoom in, it's quite a dark picture, but he's got this amazing scar down the whole left side of his face and the right of this mm. picture. This incredible scar, which was all painted amazingly by the by the amazing prosthetics team, and I've got even a, a, a cataracted, like scarred contact lens, which I couldn't see out of. Um, so I let that influence the whole physicality. So I, I made the tooth on that side stick out and I limped on that side as if he'd been through some kind of, I don't know, war wound or, yeah. or some kind of scuffle with the warg maybe. Mm -hmm. I had a similar thing actually with Magrot and he's, he's got a big scar through here and his, actually his teeth are kind of chipped away on that side as well. And so he has one of his shoulders was kind of, which is great because I have a sore shoulder. One of my shoulders was, that, was a little bit, yeah, that side was always a little bit kind of gnarled. And so as I walked, I would kind of, and so that it'd be that little neck extension as I'd, as I'd look out like that. Um, and that kind of transferred as well. And then it's really good when you get the other ones. I, I with, 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 um, with Magrot, he was always kind of pushing forward from the chest and sort of a little bit chin like here. But then with the other guy who I called Fury, uh, who, who you can see screaming at the, the tree lines when Arundh is there with, um, with, with Bronwyn. Oh, yeah. Um, as I, I played him much more kind of aggressively uh, through the hips 
and also in the back of the, the lap muscles here and just he was just always angry ready just to to to, to murder and destroy uh, and so that's something that I think is really fun to as you find those spots where you kind of condense into your character and go oh there he is <laughs> yeah it's really fun to play uh, uh, is that uh, a challenge when you're playing multiple works to try to make each one you know distinct from the other or does that kind of come naturally with the fact that you look totally different with the prosthetics and everything i think it's a balance i think i for me personally i find different points in my body as i say where i either hold tension or i usually mm -hmm. breathe into and so so you know definitely in the throat and kind of in the forward section for magrot and then sort of lower down for the uh, for the other character and then i was also the orc who got the arrow in his throat at the in the prologue and he was just oh. like just like right in the middle of the battle. And so I, I put it into different places that I'm breathing or different tension uh, or intentions. Like, are you forward? Are you back? Are you sort of, you know, a bit more scuttly? But that's how I do it. I don't know how you guys did it. That's cool. Yeah, well, for, for my second orc, Fabio, who I call him, it was more that he'd, <laughs> done, he'd obviously done a lot of catwalk modeling. So, <laughs> <laughs> real poise, real present. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Battle of the helmet. They wanted me to have a helmet, and I was really not wanting because he's got such a great head. <laughs> On the day that costume, she saw the hair and went, "Oh, he's got great hair. We can't cover that." So I kind of won. But yeah, it does come a lot of it. As as Robert was saying, a lot of it comes from the the sculpt in terms of how they look and yourself a backstory. Um, I, I think, especially with Fabio, I think he was a he's kind of a, a character that's very good at fighting and hasn't been injured yet, and so he's mm. he's almost you know, like uh, like an elf and closer to being an elf in terms of his his uprightness and gait. What, what about you, Phil? Did you did you find it hard to distinguish the two of them? I'm asking Matt, you can go. No, no, it's good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm perfectly uh, content taking a back seat here. My other orc was a lot balder. <laughs> uh, Basma has a fine head of hair, much like Fabio does. Uh, my my biggest concern in terms of physicality was trying to stay on my feet. <laughs> uh, I, I had a reputation within about two days of shooting of slipping over and falling so um yeah there are a lot of obstacles to be fair there were and um everybody has a job on set including the guy who has to water everything down and make everything slippery so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so largely i think more it was more of a case for costume, I think, for me than than the prosthetics and the stunts, because I think the costume uh, informed a lot of my um, stature and all that kind of thing as well. More more so than uh, the physicality I was taking. I was just trying to be an in charge kind of guy, really. Mm. Now, uh, Jed, I was trying to pull up your second orc here. So yeah. this is this is orc number two for Jed in the show. Fabio. And there's Fabio. Fabio with his hair. Um, and you'll recognize him. So this is from the scene where they're trying to sniff out uh, Galadriel and Theo or sniff out what's going on. And he just smells ash. Um, but you, you're also the one who starts the Nampot chat. Yeah. Um, so we should get you, the chat room should should type Nampot. Everybody spam Nampot for the orcs here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's that's a pretty that's a pretty epic uh little chant short and sweet uh it means means death am i right mm -hmm. pretty much pretty All much right. yeah <laughs> yeah there's um, uh, also a second line in the uh, uh which means into darkness uh because there is a line that um uh, magrot said in the chain pool which uh, uh which means bring them into darkness. Yes. So uh, you can hear that in the score. You can hear nam pat burzum ank, which means into darkness, which is um very cool. Yeah, we got a little bit of uh, um, a lot of people caught the gimbatul uh, when he says find them in in the tower because they're like, oh, that's that's from the the One Ring verse. <laughs> yeah. I got all that's kinds right. of messages that night from people saying, what what is that? Is that from the one? What, what's he saying? It's like, well, it's, it's subtitle, on the one ring. but yeah, but yeah, it's a, a a phrase that a lot of people latched onto. We we and we we should speak to that too because there was resistance to us having black speech 
mm. um, too much in the show. And we, we had a lot of help from Joseph, but also from Leith McPherson, the dialect mm. coach. And then I was able to have a conversation with um, one of the showrunners on set one day about wanting to have it sprinkled in there. And it was really, I mean, it's amazing for us to say because it's a, it's, a, it's a harsh, guttural language, but it really does give us a kind of an identity where, you know, as I was saying uh, to the person I was talking to, you've got dwarves speaking Kuzul and you've got elves speaking different dialects of Elvish, but we have our own language and we wouldn't use common speech especially in a battle situation. Um, so we were very chuffed to be able to um, have mm -hmm. sprinkled our own language. In the tavern, I get to say, Husha Nampuk, you know, kill them all. Yeah. And Arondia knows what I'm saying. So all the other taverners have no idea of what's coming. And so there's a bit of a surprise there. So I think we were, I think it was very fortunate that we were able to have those conversations and support from various people to allow us to have it. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a great addition. And the um, process you know, I, was interesting too. We had to send away to a, a, a round table of people yeah. back in the States who had to vet everything that was being said. And then it would come back to us through the dialogue coach. So <laughs> yeah. So there's a back and forth process to get, to get the black speech approved and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, now, I've I've talked a little bit with uh, Jed offline about um, you know performing with some of the the actors you guys performed with. Like obviously performed with uh, Joseph who plays Adar, um, and then you got to do some fight scenes as well with uh, um, Ismail Cruz Cordova who plays uh, Arondir. Um So tell me tell me a bit about what it's uh, you know what your experience has been like. Um, performing with some of the, I would say, Elvish, but Adar's not really Elvish. He's kind of the first Uruk or whatever. Um, so what's, what's it like, you know, when when you guys have performed with these uh, with these folks in the scenes that you've shared with them? Uh, me, me and Ismail got to have a pretty good uh, go back and forth uh, in the trench scene um, mm. with the with you know with the chains. Obviously, we all you guys were all pulling on the chains as well, which was which was bloody awesome, but. But there was this the scene where Ismail's just uh, finished killing the wag, and then yes. me and me and Jed and Rob are on the line, and then we get that you know, and we get the the I get the the you know stick in the throat, uh, yes. and I I just got to say um, Ismail is 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 a legend. Like he 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 is not only is he an amazing performer yeah. and 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 a really good actor, he physically he is just like a hundred percent in there, and he he doesn't make any. Like he wants to do all his own stunts. I asked, I asked one of the boys, one of the stunt boys, it's like, well, oh, what's it like being Ismail? It's double. And it's like boring. He doesn't do anything <laughs> because the double, he doesn't do anything. It's all Ismail, which is, which was so awesome. But also the other thing that I really, really liked about Ismail is he was really fun too. Like he's in the yeah. moment, like in that tavern scene, you know, it was really in the moment. But then when there's not, he's just, he's such a fun guy. So yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a pretty, pretty massive fan of Ismail. I thought he was amazing with, with him. And of course, Joseph, but yeah, Ismail was one of my, my highlights. Now, um, do any? Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. I've 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 said this to him too, but I've also said it to a lot of the fans. For me, he's kind of like the Vigo of this show. Mm. He's the hundred and twenty percenter when it comes to the physical. Mm -hmm. Also, the most generous person you'll get to work with in terms of wanting to make sure that you're looked after and you know that everybody's happy and everybody's safe. And and also working with Joseph, he did a lot of work with us in terms of helping us create the backstory. It was really mm. useful the amount of work that he'd done pre us getting there um we sort of yeah it was uh he kind of paved the way for us having a voice which i think was really important mm. jo joseph yeah just uh just to repeat that joseph was very passionate about making the uruk making the orcs come across as a people which is obviously his character's mo you know it's yeah. his storyline but as joseph as well he was very very passionate and clear and vocal about um, making sure that we felt represented as actors as well as as well as the orcs is not just kind of killing machines or just generic you know battle evil minions um so yeah that that was great because we had a really good voice on our side he also characters. said that he also said that to the i remember he said it to the whole um all the extras and the action extras and the stunt anyone who was wearing an uruk, uruk costume he would say to them 
you know, if you've got a problem, come to me. Like he was a bastion for the whole, our whole race, which as, as Robert's saying was, you know, was so wonderful and, and an amazing performer to work with. Like, whoa, so intense and so, so awesome. I have to give, I have to give what props to what am I speaking of, oh, go, go for it, Phil. I was just going to say one of my favorite memories was Margaret's uh, funeral yeah. scene. And that yeah. was incredibly well lit and just that sense that every life mattered in that sense, rather than just one body dying. It was like uh, very much a f a felt a love and a caring involved in that scene. And it, it lost a little something in the edit, but um, it's still an amazing scene for me. Yeah, yeah um, we we um we actually felt so passionate about that scene we actually got back from lunch early as a group we wanted to show the director wayne yip exactly what we'd come up with and he said that it was like it was very moving for him as a director he you know the hairs on the back of his neck were standing up so i'm really proud of us as a group and with joseph that we actually managed to push to have that be so significant although as phil said it wasn't quite that evident in terms of the of the edit in the show yeah. Mm. So is that something like, could, can you go into like what, what there more there might be to that, that we didn't get to see? There was a suggestion of, um, you know, what happens when a person dies in, in that situation, his gear gets distributed amongst the band. There was a suggestion of that, but not more than that. Mm. And everybody passed the corpse and said the same phrase, which is, Nampak uh, which means I will, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, because we saw the the one orc takes the the elven chest plate off. Um, because I I I did I messaged Jed and uh, after that episode actually, and I said, "Hey, what does Nampak Uglusha mean?" Uh, I I assumed that it did not mean thanks for the chest piece. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad that that's not. You owe me was. ten quid. It actually <laughs> means I told you this would happen. <laughs> He talks so much, I don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that was definitely, I mean, that was a, a really interesting scene. It was, uh, you know, our introduction to the character of Adar. And, um, you know, for someone who looks, for all intents and purposes, he looks elvish. Um, you know, obviously we see later that, that he does bleed black, like elves have black, or like orcs have black blood and everything. So he's definitely in that in-between um but yeah, to see the, you know, he kind of, you know, puts him out of his misery, so to speak, but he seems really torn up about it at the same time is very, uh, an, an, in, an interesting scene, you know, a look at orc culture that we've never seen before, for sure. There was, there was, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I'm, hey, I'm, I'm in New Zealand now and everyone else who matters is in the UK. <laughs> um, <laughs> and no one's watching, right? It's not live on the internet or anything. Um, but... <laughs> There was a there was a, uh, a, a, uh, some some dialogue that Joseph also said to me uh, before he he does put me out of my misery, uh, which was about that 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 all you know for all these struggles we've been going through and all this time we've got, uh, uh, you will die in our what will be our homeland, um, mm. which to me was just like you know that that scene and it was really great because I was you know I, I didn't know how Joseph wanted his you know he's got a wonderful um, way of preparing for each for each scene and I didn't know what he wanted to do but what he he didn't want to talk to me at all before the scene. He just basically, I was lying there and he mm -hmm. came in and he said those things. And even through the prosthetics and even through the, the contact lenses, I, I, I was like, I was blowing up a little bit because it, it was such a wonderful, um, beautiful scene uh, that he did. But that, that, that was the kind of, I think it was still, I hope it was still pr um, portrayed to the audience that that's what he was doing is that he was mm -hmm. lamenting and he was mourning the fact that, you know, we got so close with this, with my character, but we're going to get there. Um, yeah. But yeah, mm. he's a fine actor. Oof. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm curious. And so another fan question we got was, which of your characters, out of all you guys, took the longest each day to get made up in prosthetics and everything? Ooh. Mm, I think Ooh. I'm not sure. Mine was about five hours i'm not sure i think luke took the longest to get there because he just loves coffee so 
<laughs> just, just chatting at the table, eh, Jed? That's me. Like, I know. Always talking. You know what you like. I, I actually was probably I was probably the quickest because I I completely shaved bald. I, I was like full bald, so I didn't have a bald cap or anything on. But I, I think it was still about four and a half hours for mine. I can't remember. I think I, was, the, I think I was the best at delaying starting my makeup. <laughs> My, oh, yeah. my makeup people were always quite frustrated because I was like getting another drink and having a chat and showing them some kind of YouTube video. But to their credit, they got they got my makeup down to like three and a half hours. I think was the wow. quickest. Wow. Yeah, so we just blitzer it. So so I was like, I'll have that extra coffee. <laughs> so so the key is to delay them to the point where they have to get it. Do so they have fast. to just rush yeah. through it? No, it was. <laughs> It's got props to Alice and Hazel. They were just incredible. They and, and Claire, they just I mean, all the makeup people, those are my like my little team. We can all mention our little team. We had our yeah. we had our little stations in the truck. So even if it was one AM, two AM or in the middle of the night or whatever, we um we had these amazing people to get us through it because it's a real ordeal, as as we all know. It was always a party down your end of the bus. It really was. <laughs> I will say that. It was the fun end of the bus. The other end of the bus was was very quiet and snoozy. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. You could just I doze have... off. You had your little like your little like <laughs> facial massage. Me in three hours. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I had the one from Diamond Rose who I've had. He did also did the um Shannara Chronicles makeup, the Doug Damore, um in terms of the, the test, the first test of it, and, and then Irina and Cotty, and they were amazing. Because I had to share Simon with um, with O'Wayne. Um, he also did his his dwarvish makeup. So on the days that he was on, on the same day as us, I had to have um, Cotty step in, and yeah, we were very lucky. Uh, and, you know, we should talk to that too, because we, we're only part of the process. We're the end result. Oh, yeah. Without that makeup team, we don't get to see it. If it mm. starts to fall off your face, then you don't get a close-up. So, you know, we were very lucky the the level of um, the standard of prosthetic artists that we had on this gig. They really understood the pressure about how to look after it. And we, an international cast, too. I had a, yeah. a Spanish guy and an English woman and just an amazing team together, Pepe and Jojo. Yep. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I, Robert I, said, I had... you guys should shout out. Totally. Let's go around and shout out your, your makeup folks. Let's give them, give them a shout out here. Well, I'm going to shout out to um, Mark and Nikki who did my prosthetics. Um, and then uh, I, I just want to say that I shared a bus with Jed. So pretty much it's it's me and Jed <laughs> screaming at each other and giving each other, uh, giving each other <laughs> ribs the whole time. It was, yeah, it was awesome. We used to shut the door and just yell at him, why are you shutting the door? I hate that bastard. I don't work with him. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. So unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shouts to Mark and Nikki. They were they were awesome. Mm. They were such a good crew. Super funny. Too much giggles, but who cares? <laughs> I've mentioned mine already, but just to repeat, it was Alice Barris, uh, Claire Ramsey, and Hazel Xu, who were from Australia, Northern Ireland, and China via New Zealand. So yeah, kind of international bunch. And yeah, yeah. I, they just they really I, they they became like your family you know because they don't just do the makeup they then stay with you all day on set literally by your side and often we're doing stunts it was the middle of summer for summer shooting it's boiling hot they're there doing touch-ups but also looking after you all day checking in whether you're hydrated etc etc mm. particularly i just wanted to sh i mean all of them were just incredible but i wanted to shout out to hazel and a lot of the other trainees because there was so much so many um makeups going on they got a lot of um, relatively new, fresh makeup artists who hadn't had much experience, and uh, I can speak for Hazel, who 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 did my makeup. They just learned like that, and just you know, they they, they could just watch the makeup once, and then next time they just like and and did it, having never done it before. It was remarkable. Talk about talent! It was it was incredible to see. You would just like give a shout out to uh, William, our lens guy. Mm. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, that was amazing. So yeah, we very had, calm, very collected. Yeah. Yeah, we had we had a lens technician and he had the steadiest hands of anyone I've ever met. Usually a lot of makeup artists don't like to put lenses in because it's quite tricky. You're dealing with people's eyes. But yeah. I'd had one before on other shows and he really is. He is the the most zen uh, lens technician on the planet. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing I want to shout out to, uh, and I know this personally, is not only is there the 
make up people who are putting it on our faces every morning but there's a host of people behind the scenes to get to that point there's like mm. there's the the people we're putting on their limbs there's the people who are you know uh putting on like fingers and there's a whole whole group of people there and the, the people in the, the background hoods as well and the, those masks but then even to make those things there's people like Dan Perry, who was, you know, painting all the stuff. And there's people back at Weta, like Jason Doherty, who was, uh, who was in the original uh, rings. And also, uh, like, we, we, the reason why I think the, the, these, these Uruks look so good is because people like uh, Jamie Best Warwick and Mike Asquith were the original people who sculpted ones like Lurtz and the original ones that Phil and Jed wore. So there's, there's yeah. kind of a, a royal lineage there of, of not only uh, people putting them on, but the actual creation. And it's quite a design feat to think about how many pieces so there's there's i always i always describe it like a triangle you're as a performer the pointy end and behind you there's like 50 to 60 people getting you to that point so if you're uncomfortable suck it up <laughs> <laughs> because there's a lot of people who've worked really hard to get you there so you know um shout out to them definitely also costume i mean we could go and on in costume, and costume. Yeah. Oh, oh, my gosh um, yeah, Den denny and her team of dresses they were champions mm, but not oh, and, and Kate Hawley's designs, I mean, just, yeah. I mean, just made, because just to talk about it a little bit there, uh, in terms of the orcs being from a different age as well, that was a, a huge part of these orcs was that they are, look, they can't go in the sunlight, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that was something that we also worked into the physicality and the, and the kind of culture of these orcs. So we had these, we obviously had armor and a lot of that was the designs were based on things that we'd scavenged and stolen as we saw by the chest plate that's very similar to Rondier's that was mm -hmm. pinched off Magra. Um, helmets that were made from bones or kind of elven, old first age elven helmets that we kind of refashioned, etc. But then these capes, which were, and Jed, you're going to have to tell me what the capes were made from. Jed knows. Latex. They're made from uh, yeah, latex. No, no, as in in, in the oh, real dragon, in the world. Dragon skin. So they're dragon skin. Oh, yeah. what they call cold drakes. So they're dragons before they can breathe fire. Yeah, yeah. Dragons, cold drakes, yeah. And just mm. again, these things weren't just thrown on. They were, you know, they they were positioned and, and chosen and coloured and broken down to, to, with kind of dirt and sulfur and all of this stuff is every every little detail is. Even look at the stitching on the side of his helmet. It's just so the detail yeah. of it is just so mm. The, and the rouging that's on that that shoulder, I remember Danny just sitting there every take for just like five minutes, just getting it exactly right. the right position. <laughs> and you don't you don't think it matters, but then you see it that that as a as a like a you know as an art piece, like it it, it you, every single part of that frame has been considered uh, all the way, you know, and and it's definitely the costume, as Rob was saying, you know, the faces are a large part of it, but the costumes are such a massive part of it as well. Um, yeah, beautiful work. That yeah. was my first my first day on set was in the costume department and it just blows your mind to see the designs. You just kind of go, yeah. wow. I'll oh, look at that. Mm. Stuff. Yeah. Look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh th those of you who uh might have missed the comment there, uh so this is dragon skin. Um yeah. So dra dragons, young dragons, before they can breathe fire, they call them yeah. cold breaks. And we would have crawled around their lairs finding those because they're, they're immune to fire for one thing. Um, but they're also very translucent, but also very good at blocking out the sun. Yeah. Well, yeah. And as we saw, you know, through the, as the episodes have gone on, it's revealed that <clears throat> Sauron had taken orcs to the far North and, uh, as we know from Tolkien, that's where uh, dragons, like that's where Smaug comes from, is from the far north. And so um, it looks like the orcs got got a hold of some baby dragons and uh, yeah, got, got them before they got too <laughs> dangerous, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, in, now, I'm, in, re in reality, they were, yeah, rubber latex and they were, to put it mildly, very warm <laughs> in the middle of summer in the sun. And heavy. And, and heavy. heavy and would have obviously kind of holes in where they'd been broken down which would get caught on every single little bit of wood or nail that was sticking out so you'd be trying to do something really powerful and impressive and just be like <laughs> while, your, while your cape gets caught on or stood on or something you gotta laugh you gotta laugh so, so feeling like you're roasting out there in the sun was a little bit of method acting for you guys there uh, being orcs who are averse to the sun, you got nice and toasty under those things. Oh, yes. 
You said it best, Chad, when we were waiting for uh, for Ismail to, to do that, that you know, the gag where he sits me in the, in the throat and he's standing there, we're getting ready to shoot and Jed just goes, if I don't start rolling, I'm going to literally catch on fire. <laughs> yeah. Like it was, it really did. Yeah, it was kind of the end of summer, you know, and we, the, the trench, in the trench, it just seemed to be a place that gathered heat and it was like being a tomato in a greenhouse, but we wiped <laughs> over the day. Plus, the, a lot of the budget was in the lighting as well, and they had some very large lights on the <laughs> The big fake sun, as well as the real sun. Yeah. <laughs> Double sun. <laughs> Double sun. <In> Tatooine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, um, I'm, I'm curious, what was it like for you guys? Because obviously, you know, presumably you guys experienced in uh let's see here i guess it's a couple episodes ago now uh the eruption of mount doom um that we saw that's something that was obviously you know uh post-production stuff that you wouldn't have really seen much you know goings on uh while you were filming what was that like you know to see to see the completed product where you know the orcs are successful in setting off mount doom it was a real volcano. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're a volcano. That's why they, that's yeah. why they left New Zealand is because they that's... pissed a whole bunch of people off, man. <laughs> <laughs> lots, of, lots of real world devastation trying to sweep it under the rug there. Yeah. I, I have to admit, obviously, I kind of knew it was coming in the storyline. That episode, I my jaw was on the floor in terms of like the CGI. I just was... I just, yeah. it was one of those rare moments where actually it's quite hard to watch a show that you've been in, particularly mm. something like this, where you became such a like family with each other. Sometimes it's quite hard to watch it and, and remove all that, you know, and just watch it for what it is. Cause you just see your friends and you remember funny things about the capes or shooting, but that, that episode and particularly that, you know, the climax with the volcano, I was just so in it and I forgot all about me and the bits I did. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was just it was just gobsmacking. I kept asking um, Tyro, who plays Theo, what the shard was, what it did. You know, it was I kept thinking, is this some special sword that Galadriel had, or is it a is it a um, you know like a Morgoth blade, or is it what is it? And um, no one would tell me. So when I saw it being used to open up the floodgates, I was like, oh no wonder they didn't tell me because I would have told everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so, love the, the the throwback with the, the in the trenches as well because we knew we were building the trenches to get to get to Mount Doom, yeah. but I didn't. The whole then throwback of oh, but the trenches are also the pathway in was was bloody awesome. And I think yeah. the only the only other time I've watched uh, um, something like that where it was so as Rob was saying, like whoa, especially with people getting molten lava exploding in in the village and like getting obliterated, that was yeah. pretty 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 crazy. But I think. There was a certain that, that that initial shockwave, which was similar to when to uh, when you know the, that shockwave when Frodo throws the ring yeah. into um, Mount Doom, it kind of had a reminiscent of that bang, like whoa! It was yeah, it was breathtaking. It was so cool. I tell you, I tell you, what was also incredible was the sets that they made for the the aftermath. Mm. And I know there's been a few videos that have come out about how they did that, and a lot of it was, yeah. I mean, it was almost all practical. I I. I I was on the set where it was in, indoors, but it was made to look like the outdoors post eruption. And it was just, I've never seen a set like it. It was also yeah. because everyone had to wear masks because there was fake ashes around, but, but we couldn't really wear masks because we had prosthetics on. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was quite a lot to be in, but I mean, again, it was, I mean, honestly, like inches and inches of, of these ashes, it was, it was real. We didn't, you didn't really have to, pretend you know it was uh, other than looking way in the distance you could see the doors to the studio you felt like you were in this post-apocalyptic um landscape it was incredible yeah yeah that is amazing. that is one of my favorite uh, sets off their seen. cloaks sorry what yes did you say? we got to we got to throw the cloaks off that was oh, really yes. well we didn't have to act <laughs> <laughs> it was ashes nothing but ashes <laughs> So we did. We did have a request from the chat that they would love to hear your orc voices. Oh wow! <laughs> for e for any of you that are up for it, to give us your orc voices. Oh, well, I mean, Jed just did his, right? He did. It, that, that was Fabio. Yeah, that was Fabio. Oh golly! Uh, 
Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the black speech is really easy because it was saying it's to chew, like, you know, um, yeah. is like, is so much, you know, so easy to yeah. guttle. But I, I think we were talking about more of the accents, right? About that they're not full Cockney. They're somewhere, somewhere between South London and, and you know, and not full Cockney because that's not, you know, going to work. But um, <laughs> I've got a water ration. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard to be put on the spot, eh? Is that yeah, yeah. Like, no. Okay, down <laughs> yeah. dance monkey, and you're like, uh, uh, that was months ago. What did I do? Right, but yeah. yeah, you try, Elf, and I will make a map of your back. Very yes. nice. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, now, Jed, you touched on um, before I forget. You you touched on not knowing what the dagger is. Um, it seems like you know, they, they were pretty good at keeping secrets from you. Um, yeah. Now do you, are, so are you, are you going into the season finale this week kind of in the dark on most everything that's going to happen like the rest of us? Yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I quite like that, you know, I'm, yeah. I have a reputation for being a terrible spoiler. So people can't <laughs> tell me anything because I can't keep a secret. <laughs> and I've been very <laughs> honest about that. Um, online Please don't tell me because i'll tell everyone i just can't help it i love to tell a good story and if it just happens to be something that ruins it for other people i yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so i'm glad that they kept it from me i'm glad that they kept everything from me really because it meant yeah. i would watch it with um with kind of new eyes but yeah i i think it's i i we were talking about that it's very hard to watch things that you're in because you know how it's made the behind the scenes and and it's been actually really refreshing watching this, knowing that we were only involved in our own Uruk stuff. Didn't get to see a lot of the other sets. I was lucky enough to spend one day going and having a look at Kazakh Doom, um, just because Leith introduced me to my forefather, um, Durin III, had played Nori in The Hobbit. But apart from that, I didn't get to see a lot of the other sets, none of the Num Numenorean stuff. So it's been mm. wonderful to see that with fresh eyes, mm. like other people see it like yeah. people who are not involved in the farming actually get to see it so yeah i'm excited Numenor. amazing yeah mm. i did manage to sneak on the boat one day <gasps> what yeah it was very it was like one of my first days and i i mean obviously they were very very strict with security so even you know up cast even main cast i think weren't it, it was very difficult to go onto other sets but i think i was like oh i'm just gonna nip to the toilet and i just kind of kept going <laughs> And then when I was there, someone was like, come on up. So I got to, not while they were filming, obviously, but I mean, yes. that was incredible because it was a real full boat. It was like a life-size yeah. boat that moved. It was incredible. Wow. Yeah. Well, we, we won't I wish, tell wish anybody you had been in... snuck on. We'll, I, we'll I was going to say, I, I, wish, I wish Rob was in prosthetics when he snuck on by accident. Right. Like, oh, <laughs> 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 <There's an orc. laughs> a little more noticeable, yeah. So um, now... Uh, you guys touched on, you know, seeing some of the other aspects of the show, you know, that you didn't get to see as much of the making of. So uh, that brings me to the question. I'd love to get each of your opinion, uh, each of you guys' opinion on what part of the show is your favorite outside of the Uruks. Hmm. Yeah, it's difficult because the Uruks just so bangingly good. Um <laughs> Yeah, for me, for me, Kazakh Doom, I just think that, mm, the, that yeah. all of that of that dwarven architecture, and I love that that relationship between Elrond and and Durin. I think that that's yeah, I think it's really rich. It's not just because I've played a dwarf myself, but I just really like that part of the story, the unity that exists between those two races, and the way that they're going to negotiate it. And just the sets just look amazing. It's um, it's an incredible piece of of um, construction. But also, there's some great performances in there too. I've been really enjoying yeah. it. Mm. That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyone I, else? I, um, yeah, you can feel free I'm, to steal the same one or a different one. Or uh, mine, mine is. I liked. Um, it's 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 the same sort of characters, but I I really am enjoying Arundir uh, and Bronwyn's journey, and I think I think that there, there's a there's a as you know we said before there's an Aragorn kind of Arwen thing thing there but but that that line that he says to it you know which he says what what are you saying he says what, what i've said a thousand times without words was just like mm. oh 
you know, but I, I really am enjoying their their journey. Um, and I know, you know, if you kind of, I sort of slightly cheating because they're, they're Uruks, they're, <laughs> they're battling, but right. just the, the, their two characters I, I, I really like, and especially the, the relationship with, with um, Theo as well. But yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful love story and a wonderful, you know, cross, cross lovers, and, but also, you know, just the, what they're facing. Um, so that's, uh, that's part of the show I'm, I'm really, really digging. Rob? Rob? I think, I don't want to cop out, I think the, I think the Harfords are just joyous, and I love the way they've, like, devolved Hobbits into Harfords. But my main answer is going to be actually Numenor, Numenor, mm. because I know a little of the story, you know, I know what Tolkien wrote, but I, I love the, like, politics of it. And I'm really intrigued to see how it's all going to pan out. And I think there's going to be some really interesting, very political um, uh, characters there that I think there's, I, I, this is complete speculation. I think there's going to be some real twists and turns with some of those characters they've introduced and how they set up the, the fall of Numenor, obviously. Mm. I have really enjoyed what little we've seen of Farazan has mm. intrigued me. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so I'm looking forward to seeing more from him for sure. I'd add my voice to Numenor, uh, Numenor but for me, the, the thing that I remember most is, and I think in that first episode, with, when the half feet or the half foots are all camouflaged, and then mm. those people pass, and all of a sudden they just appear out of everywhere. It's um, <laughs> delightful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard to pick. It's yeah. the artistry, you know, the, and this, this is a, a big tick to, to people like John Howe, obviously the you know concept artists and the, the people at Weta Workshop and the people at Weta Digital. It is sumptuous. The sets are just amazing. The coloration is amazing. It's it's a feast for the eyes, and you know it's yeah the the, the level of artistry involved in in the making of those sets, but in the making of the, the way that they've shot it and the and the grading and everything is just it's wonderful. It's a feast. And the I think out the armor is and the weapons guys as well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Numenor is also the only place in Middle Earth that I'd actually like to vacation with my kids. And my wife. Oh yeah, <laughs> like uh, like everywhere else, you're like oh, that might be a bit difficult. But Numenor is like I would go on a holiday, yep. man. That yeah. looks like a paradise. Do it soon. Do it. Yeah. Soon. Just, <laughs> yeah. As long Why? As you're selective about the time. Yeah. <laughs> I get a little think... wet. Rob, Rob alluded to it. It may not be there forever. <laughs> mm -mm, yeah. Boiler. So uh, we got a, a chat. It's funny. We've, we've got uh, people wondering in the chat. Uh, Zachary Riley asks, um, do you think we'll see Sauron when he goes to the elves or will we see him before then? And I, I can guarantee Zachary, I appreciate the question, but I don't think even if the guys knew they could tell us when we're going to see Sauron. As Who's um, real Sauron? The, the bit, I think everyone is Sauron. My, Who's Sauron? I've, nev I've never heard of it. I, it's a very little known character that Tolkien wrote about. I think uh, it's a, f a couple footnotes. Hmm. Yeah. You, you probably haven't heard of him. I, I reckon if you, if you put in this little unknown film called, um, what is it? Lord of the Rings, the fellowship of the ring, you might see where Sauron is. Yeah. Yeah. He, as much makes, as we can tell you. I think he I think he makes a cameo. Yeah. A little spoiler, it could be one of the four people here. Or it might not be. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> I will so I've also had I've noticed a few people uh referring to Jed as the Tom Holland of uh Middle Earth that he's uh a little loose lipped. I don't know if you know that reference from the Marvel <laughs> universe, <laughs> but um, I will say, so an amusing story that I haven't told people on my channel before yet, but when we were at Comic-Con, Jed and I actually got stuck outside the building uh, because our, our passes for the Torn booth were from like the previous day or something. There was this whole thing where we ended up standing outside for a good 45 minutes and I ended up having like it, it was like behind the scenes of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit for like 45 minutes. And I wish... <laughs> yeah. I wish you guys could have listened in on it. Those those of you listening in because it was fantastic. I was just like like sucked away to the uh, in a time capsule with Jed for for 45 minutes, but if, if, uh, if how it, much of it was true? Pretty much all, you know all of it was true. The, the problem is that I I could destroy careers and I don't want to do that. 
or do I? <laughs> one, one day I will write a book. And um, yeah, I mean, the, we, we try very hard when we go to conventions and when we're talking to the fans to keep it really positive. But that doesn't mean that it was all fun and games. It was a lot of stuff that happened, as I was telling you, Matt, that was interesting to those of us that kind of have a, an interest in the making of. But also, you know, it's not all fun and games. There's a lot of hard work as well. And there's a yeah. lot of things that happen that you can't really talk about. But I did talk about to you. <laughs> but you can't tell it. <laughs> now, see, now, Jed... Now, when we've talked, you you make out like this prosthetic stuff is just miserable. And my theory is that you just want f less competition taking all these awesome orc roles <laughs> and you want to keep them all to yourself is what it is. Yeah. That, and what, so what's happened here is that the, these other three are going to tell you that it's all fun. And that's just <laughs> the whole thing that I've tried to say about that it's hideous, hideous and torturous. That's right. Yeah, it's funny because you were the only one whinging the whole time. We were all like, this is awesome. And it's like, what's up with Brophy, man? He's just I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it was all a game. It's all a game. Yep. Now, um, if if you guys know, we've talked about orcs a lot. And Jed, obviously, you've played, uh, you know, we know you've played Nori and an elf and Ryder Rohan and stuff like that. Um, so my question is to all of you, if you were not an orc, so like who knows what, what happens in the future Middle Earth adaptation wise. So if you had your choice of a race of being in Middle Earth to play that is not an orc, what would it be? Dwarf. You and uh, <laughs> love to be a right, you know, one of the one of the rangers of the north. I think that they're just mm. they're my favorite characters in Middle Earth. Yeah, Aragorn's lot. Dew and Dane, I think they're incredible. I, and I love that they've been wandering Middle Earth, trying to find a home as well, you know, since the fall of their kingdom. They've been trying yeah. to find their rightful place. And, but the fact that they do most of their stuff on horseback or tracking through the forest, I really, I kind of, I'm akin with that. Yeah. Now, Phil, you said dwarf, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's a good choice. I like it. <laughs> I'd, I'd go with Rohan. I think uh, I, I, you know, I definitely uh, the the kind of the where where they're situated and and they're kind of you know obviously we see them very fallen and um in Lord of the Rings, but I I I like their whole kind of outlook on 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 life and and I think you know that that's how I'd like to be. I I was thinking about it and for some reason for me elves I just have never had an affinity with. I I played one in The Hobbit briefly, um, but I never really. Yeah, <laughs> why? Uh, uh, they see, they seem a little um, entitled, stuck up. Mm. <laughs> well, that's just my opinion. You know, Ismail, if you're listening, no offense. You know, uh, or, or anyone else who I've worked with. But... Hey, they know a lot. They know a lot. There's a lot. Of... Oh, I know. <laughs> now you are talking about the characters and not the actors, right? <laughs> we're just making we sure about... we're not. Oh yes, yes. yes okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. What about? Rob, sure. what about you, Rob? I think it's very obvious that I would make a fantastic end. Ah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yes, of course. A quick yeah. ring. Maybe an endling. That would be cute. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there you um, go. Yeah. That's a unique answer. I don't think I've what? ever gotten someone who's saying an end before. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Well, there's the longevity. Mm. There you go. Mm. I'm taking my time to... to get stuff said yeah. and and you know a lot of people have said that you're a wooden actor i don't <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> that was yeah. my that was that was a joke was, i just had to put shots fired up, you know <laughs> his bark is worse than his bite and all of that oh, oh stop jay no, i'll just i'll leave it there <laughs> oh, my word i don't want to be an ant anymore <laughs> I've ruined it. <laughs> okay, now, Robert, I know you talked a little bit about you're kind of familiar with the the kind of the Tolkien lore of what uh, happens in the Second Age and everything. So, um, from from what you guys know of the Second Age, and obviously, you know, season one is just now about to wrap up, and who knows what's in store for seasons two through five exactly. Um, but as you look at the story elements uh, that Tolkien laid out, what what's something from the Second Age that you look at and say, "Oh, I can't wait until you know we might see this in the show." 
Mm. Well, can I just start by saying that as far as we're aware in law, the rings are made in uh, Eregion, and we haven't seen that. Yeah. The dwarves talk about going for answers to Linden, which is right on the coast. We have yet to see civilization being created at the doors of Moria. So mm, yeah. um, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, third in the shipwright gets involved in the second age, does a bit of saving of some people there. I'm, I'm interested to see him because he's one of my favorite um, of all of the um, elven characters from not just from the second age, you know, he's, he's there right from the beginning. Yeah. All through. And he's the only elf with a beard. So yeah. See how well, they do. Other, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, I want to see, I want to see that personally. I, I, I'm really looking forward to, to, to Numenor getting wet. <laughs> I really, I think that's going to be pretty epic. I think yeah. that, Yeah. I know, I, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, it's obviously the foretelling and stuff's, you know, already alluded to, but I think that's going to be similar. I mean, I'm not, I'm not at all, you know, all that death and doom and destruction, but <laughs> it's similar to the Mount Doom creation. Yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be something that's, no, no matter, you know, you knew it was going to happen uh, yeah. in, in this season and having that come, I think is, is you know, you, it's leading up to it and it, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. Well, and we saw the, you know, Muriel's vision, I was honestly yeah. mm. really shocked that we saw the gl the brief glimpse of it that we did. I love that uh, I've talked about this before on the channel. I love that it was shot from a fully from her perspective instead of like this big, you mm. know, a lot of disaster movies show like big wide shots that are unrealistic. You know, no one would ever experience it from that angle. And this was all from her point of view. And you just got that sense of dread as the wave is rolling in. So it, it makes me very curious to see how they do the actual thing when it happens. Mm. Robert, what about you? I am very intrigued to see or find out more about the, the kind of descent of or the creation of the Nazgul, the, mm. the mortal yeah. men. I'm, in, I'm intrigued about that and how that might be shown or told. You could do well as a Nazgul. Thank you very much, Phil. <laughs> I replaced my answer. Nazgul. <laughs> I mean, video with a Nazgul. <laughs> having played a Nazgul myself, um, they're wonderful, but a little bit soulless is the only is thing. Anything you haven't played? Um, I haven't played a Hobbit. Well, I did actually play a Hobbit when we were testing <laughs> the three. But no, I haven't. No, I, yeah, the, the Nazgul are great, but they are soulless. They just and they don't like coffee, so. That's just one no. of them. You've been so mean, Rob. You know, Jed, Jed has not played a wizard yet. I we have. I uh, yeah, I think the. Uh, I think. But I, we, I think you go. Think you should play a wizard. <laughs> I'm not saying which one, but I do think that you should. Play a I think. I think we should get Outrageous. hashtag Brophy the Blue trending as well. Wow. Mm. Mm. Out there for a beard. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even need to. No. <laughs> yeah, we already talked about the amazing prosthetic work. You don't even have to grow a beard. You just uh, get it slapped on. Yep. Be a lot less time in the chair, I'm sure, than the orc stuff. True. <laughs> Much more itchy, though. Yeah, no, I don't mind that. I don't, I don't mind a beard. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've I've said, and we've talked about this too, Matt, I'd be happy to play anyone. I just, I feel very grateful for the time that I've had in Middle Earth and didn't really expect to do it again. So anything that anyone ever wanted me to do, I will do, as long as they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, you never see a fat elf, do you? <laughs> yeah. Not yet. Yet. Yes. <laughs> oh goodness well guys i just i just looked down at my clock and realized we've been going for an hour so i need to to get this oh, wrapped yeah. up but um I've got to work. <laughs> but uh yeah and i know robert robert especially for you it's it's super late but i know you're a night owl but that's you know still it's it's pretty late we need to get get you some rest but um i wanted to wrap up with um you know what uh uh, from your experiences, and I know you know a lot of you guys were were also on uh, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and everything. You know, from from your experience in Middle Earth, what 
what has been the big thing from Tolkien's world that you've kind of taken away from it on a personal level and really treasured, whether that's, you know, something from a character you played or, uh, you know, an experience during certain scenes or uh, working with some of the Weta folks, you know, just it can, it can be as specific or general as you'd like. But what, how is, how has Middle Earth affected you? I think it's changed the fabric of cinema. And I've said that before. I really think it's changed the way that fantasy is seen as being one of these um, genres that was kind of looked down upon, but has actually been lifted into a, an area when rarefied air, really, because yeah. of the, um, the amount of work that people put into it. When the literature is good and it's so loved, as Tolkien's work is, you want to do a good job. You don't want to let the fans or yourself down. And I think that that's the one thing that I always take away from this is I always put in more effort than probably anything else to try and make these projects work because they mean so much to so many people, but mostly because it meant so much to me as a young man growing up. This literature was an escape for me from, you know, the sometimes the, the, the dreariness of working on a farm. I was able to escape into this wonderful rich tapestry that um that he created so i i would have i would have watched the films as a fan and i've been lucky enough to be in them so i i feel eternally grateful yeah that's my voice as well i mean to be read the hobbit as a six-year-old or whatever and then to actually be part of that world is amazing it's a, yeah. it's a wish fulfillment mm. i mean i i i I've been working as a creative person uh, now because of this, these films and because of this, this, you know, this, these stories for 24 years, which I never could have imagined uh, to, to be doing it behind and in front of the camera. But I think that, that that's like where, where I am in, in, in my life. And, and I feel so, as, as Jed and Phil said, I feel so amazingly blessed to be able to be a part of it at any stage. But I actually think the biggest thing I take away from it, I actually watched Fellowship again the other day. Uh, and this, this sense, sense of, um, and it does kind of come back a bit, there's a sense of duty and a sense of loyalty and a sense of, of that you have to do what's right, even though you don't, you don't, you can't, or you, there's all these things in front of you that you, you know, that may stop you. But I think, I think, and that's a lot of to do what we're talking about with all the work that we do, all the creative work and the long hours and the hard work. Is, is that you do it because you know how important it is. Even even you know, with the hard work is an, is is such a reward. Uh, but also, you know, doing things that you know you have to, um, even though you don't want to. But yeah, I, I think that that for me and the whole story, the whole journey of Frodo and Sam, I just think is such a a universally um, beautiful beautiful story. So that's what I take away from it. My answer is a tiny bit of a G one because it's not strictly what Tolkien wrote. But a personal thing I took was was in New Zealand. Basically, obviously, I'm not from there, but I'm lucky enough to uh, to be able. I was lucky enough to be able to go there during the pandemic, and the people, the landscapes is just so inextricably linked now to the story of Lord of the Rings, and just meeting all the people and getting to see the sights I saw there to do with the show and and in my own time was just unforgettable, incredible place. Yeah, I just want to say what a joy it was to have you join us as a Kiwi, Rob. You, uh -huh. you're, you're a Kiwi eternally. In our hearts, and you know, you came and did the mahi on our soil with us. You're, mm. you're tongue to whenua. You're one of us, so you always welcome back. Wow, that means a lot. Thank you, Jed. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, I, I I don't think we can top those uh, those closing comments. So um, thank you guys so so much for for joining me here on the stream and talking orcs. I'd love to have you back sometime. Again, in the future, I'm sure there's no shortage of uh, conversations that we can uh, have from Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, Rings of Power, all these awesome projects. You guys have uh, put in all these amazing hours in the makeup chair and then also in front of the camera um, to bring some of the uh, most um, praised orcs uh, <laughs> that we've seen to life. And uh, yeah, we've... <laughs> we've uh, had no shortage of uh, the the nampot cheer uh, going on in uh, chats and discords uh, all around this show. So um, you guys have certainly made an impression. And uh, I just thank you guys so much for taking the time today. 
Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, tomorrow night we will have our watch party here on Nerd of the Rings Ooh. as the episode drops. So be sure to uh, come back tomorrow. Uh, moderators are dropping that link in the chat for you. Um, and we'll watch the season finale live together and react live. And we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings. <laughs>